So we're looking at one of my favorite works of art from the last 30 or 40 years. This is Damien Hirst, and I'll admit that one of my favorite aspects of this work is its title. I feel like just those words could be a work of art. I mean, I'm not even looking at the shark. The idea of the physical impossibility of death in the mind of someone living, and there's different ways to parse that, actually. It's either wordplay or deep, and I haven't figured that out yet. It strikes me as this great truth, the impossibility of really coming to terms with death as someone who's living. In many ways, the history of art is a coming to terms with mortality, of transcending the physical body, of the afterlife. Art through history has dealt with big questions. This is a work of art taking on those big questions. Because I agree with you about the title. The okay. title, I'm going to think about it all day. I mean, that's why we're so afraid of death, because we just can't process it. But what we're looking at is, I'm assuming a non-living shark, looks like a very large shark, and a tank, but what am I looking at, actually? It's a real shark that was caught and killed and suspended in a tank of formaldehyde. It's stationary, although it looks like it's moving. It is stationary, and it's in a kind of beautiful tank, something that the artist is sort of framing the shark in for us to see it. And, and so, I mean, but just go back to, I guess, both the title and it being a work of art. And, and I'm starting to appreciate, I mean, because, you know, you could put this in a natural history museum. This is a shark. This is what a shark looks like. Study it. It's, it's like a stuffed bison or woolly mammoth or something. But, it, I mean, the title combined with this makes me think. I mean, there's some obvious things here. It's dead. I mean, I can, I can interpret it. I, I just feel like I'd be making up stuff, though. I think that's part of the idea. When artists make things in the 20th and the 21st century, they're more open to interpretation than art in the Renaissance. We're looking at art which is meant to be kind of open to interpretation. It's not just what the artist said it meant, but we're allowed to bring our own ideas and associations to it, to fill out its meaning, to complete it. In fact, Duchamp said that a work of art is completed by the viewer. So let's talk about our associations with it. Yes, we're almost challenged that it's physically impossible to comprehend death in the mind of a living. I, I believe I'm living, so based on the title, I just can't, I'm being told that I can't comprehend death, and I'm, and I'm just being faced with death right there. I've been faced with a very big version of death on, on kind of multiple dimensions. I mean, there's the, the shark is dead, although it looks like it's swimming, but, but it, it, it's also something that could kill me. If I were, as, and you know, this is post the movie Jaws, so the shark, you know, there's few animals that um, occur to humans as something scary more than a, a big shark. And it, when you stand in front of this, it's scary to look at. It's like, oh my God, I'm very close to something that could kill me. And I, I mean, I guess you, your brain keeps going back and forth. Am I really processing death here or am I fearful of this thing that I can't process? And that's why I'm afraid of. Well, why couldn't he have put a tiger and maybe he could have. He just chose to use a shark, or a shark is more convincing, or it's just different. I, I mean, he does use other animals. There's a famous series where he slices sheep lengthwise and puts them in tanks. This is not the original shark. In other words, this sculpture now has a second shark because the first one dissolved. <laughs> Despite the formaldehyde, it decayed. And the formaldehyde, of course, is trying to maintain the intactness of the shark and perhaps even its viciousness and this notion of its livingness. But we fail. You know, this still dissolves. This still, in a sense, even but the was dead that by, shark That wasn't died. by design, though. He intended this to be a permanent... I think he is struggling to yeah. keep this shark intact. That's exactly right. Yeah. But we don't have the means to do that. But who isn't struggling to keep themselves but, but intact? Guess, here I'm feeling that there's a... I guess I haven't completely bought this layer of interpretation because this feels like a completely inadvertent side effect of how... The fact that he put a shark in formaldehyde to me implies that he was hoping that this would be around for a long time. His design didn't hold up to time, and so it's kind of falling apart. I mean, but that wasn't the artist's intention. Well, it's interesting. By the time we get to the late 20th century, artists are well versed in this idea of the impermanence of art. Beth said a minute ago that art for its entire history has tried to transcend human death. And in fact, one of the definitions, one of the philosophical definitions of what a work of art is, is something that outlives us, that is transgenerational. Yeah. But here's something that is not paint. Here's something that's not marble. Here's something that is flesh like we are. And yet there is this vain attempt 
attempt to have it outlive us, and it doesn't. It I can't. think he knew, yeah. So it wasn't just a design flaw. I mean, he stuck this in amber or something. There's too and much. There's too much art that has changed over time for him not to know. He's too sophisticated to know that this would have been kind we, of a. You know, the ancient Egyptians mummified bodies. I mean, yes. there's a whole history of human beings trying to stop time. We all yeah. know that. You know, we can use our best chemicals. We can do plastic yeah. surgery. We can do all sorts of things, and nothing is going to stop the inevitability yeah. of. Yeah, I mean, decay. he could have stuck it in amber or something, and been that much more. Preserved. Would have been even slower. It would have been. E or, yes. or, or he yes. could have done something much more traditional, which is he could have represented a shark and made it more permanent in that way. Right, right, right. But by choosing the thing itself, he created the impossibility of its own preservation. Yeah, I mean, my brain just keeps going back and forth. Once again, I mean, the title by itself is all you need. So you have that whole conceptual dimension, but then you have this absolutely physical dimension, and you have this clash between that physical and that poetic. It's in that contradiction, it's in that confrontation that I think the art really exists. Yeah, I don't think it's just in the title. The title is lovely and no. really speaks to me, I admit it. But the title together with this sculpture is a really complicated experience. I feel like there should almost be a new type of museum called a philosophy museum. I mean, especially if you look at like a classical art museum, it is, I mean, it is about the history and the, the conversation that people are having and the, uh, but, but it is a lot about aesthetics. And it seems like, I mean, see, maybe actually modern art should be called philosophical art or a museum of philosophy because it really is, and even the word museum I feel is the wrong, because museum seems to be, let's preserve something that someone else has created while it seems like a lot of this modern art is really about kind of put the philosophy in your face right now without an answer. I, I, I don't know whether I'm being hoodwinked or not. I think that question about sort of always being a little bit worried about this being a kind of grand joke in yeah. some way is always there. And it, it's something that gets given voice quite a bit, in part because in art now, almost nothing is off limits. Yeah. And artists find ways of asking profound questions about things that can be very mundane or seem overtly silly, but can actually or be... Or intentionally shocking. Absolutely. I think in some ways the art world asks for that cynicism. But on the other hand, that doesn't mean that profound ideas aren't being asked.